And so 262, the next trial published last summer, 2016, in the New England Journal, was a study of dose dense weekly. When paclitaxel is given weekly, we can give more of it. We can give 80 a week. 80 times 3 is 240. That's more than 175. So no breaks. Paclitaxel 80 every week with carboplatin every three weeks. Again, that was supposed to be the confirmatory trial, the Japanese mm -hmm. trial that you mentioned, but it also was negative. Yeah. And people have said, like you suggest in 252, that bevacizumab was the equalizer. Yeah. Well, it was a suboptimal population, yes. first of all, stage 3, 4. And you had 14.8 uh, months um, PFS in, in the group that, that received the dose dense versus 14.3 months. So, so not, short. Not, not different. Mm -hmm. Short because of your population being suboptimal. And almost 700 patients in this trial. Mm -hmm. And um, certainly one of the things that, that you look at is, again, the BEV issue. And so in this particular trial, it was not assigned whether you would get BEV. It was uh, physician and patient choice. And as it turns out, about 84 plus percent chose to go on to bevacizumab. But it was free. So the overall results show no difference. However, if you look at that smaller group of about 16 percent of the patients, you see that there was a difference, uh, about 14 point two versus 10.3, hazard ratio was, was fairly impressive, 0 0.59. So significant difference for those that got the dose dense, favoring the dose dense, which supports the Japanese data in those that are, do not have bevacizumab at the okay. time, frontline therapy. So does, does the that dose dense is, is uh, more efficacious. Thank you, Tom. That's really important. So does that define now the chemotherapy standard in the frontline treatment of ovarian cancer? It's a subset analysis, but it confirms the Japanese experience that the standard treatment is weekly paclitaxel dose dense with carboplatin every three weeks. I'd like to hear the panelists' opinion of what you think your go-to chemotherapy regimen is frontline. That's a very practical question. So let's just be clear. In terms of a standard arm for a clinical trial, yeah. I think that makes sense. Okay. In terms of a standard of care mm -hmm. when you're treating a patient, sure. I think there's more than one standard yeah, in how standard. you can okay. treat yeah. it's a patients with ovarian cancer. What percent of patients do you think get dose-dense weekly paclitaxel in North Carolina? Uh, I do not know that frequency. Okay. I'll tell you, we serve a fairly large yeah, area. We have patients that are coming from yeah. far away. Good point. And it's not convenient for them yeah, yeah. to come every week. Yep. Sometimes you can arrange for them to, to have some of their treatments by a local physician closer to them, but even that can always be easy. So for some patients, they prefer the convenience of a Q3 week regimen. Some patients um, will come weekly for their treatments. And for some pa in, for patients, I mm. do discuss the um, incorporation of bevacizumab into their regimen. That's for select patients. Sure. So. When it's given every three weeks. Yes. So, so Rob, what do you think? Well, I would say that in our, um, it's very similar. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, even in, in Houston, if the, if the patients are in the periphery and we have where our clinics are in the periphery, they'll be more likely to get dose dense than if they come actually in town because, because the, the, it's just where the referral right. factors are. But I do think that one thing I wanted to mention because it's important in the um, patient population and why I keep going back to that is if you go back to GOG 111, which was when Pactaxel and Cisplatinum was brought into the frontline setting, the median PFS in that group of patients of suboptimal patients was 18 months. But in this study, 262, same patient population, suboptimal, in, the t in, the, in, the, in that, same group, that same infusion, although we used carboplatinum and three-hour paclitaxel, 10 months. So I think it's part of the assessment. In that, in that era, we were not doing CT scans. At the no, it's Eight not just that. Months? I don't think it's just no, that. No, I don't. I, I, don't think, know if it's I think you yeah. have to look at what the studies were open, right. and yep. that study was open. It's like, uh, yeah, that's a good she has that's a black, optimal. She's exactly. Suboptimal. I think that's I think what I'm that's saying. A big so there is, there is, there are inherent even in the we've seen that trials. over time, right? We exactly. Saw that with you, so I just want to caution. You know, when we start looking at the well, yes, absolutely. So that's interesting. So I think that we can agree that. Many patients, I'm not sure I can say most, get dose dense weekly. AUC probably a six of carboplatin every three weeks, paclitaxel 80, no break. Bevacizumab is still an option, Katie. Is bevacizumab used, or tell me what your thoughts are, frontline bevacizumab, because you heard that it ruined 262 and it ruined 252 because <laughs> it's this great drug. If it's such a great drug, maybe we should add it to Q3 week chemotherapy. Remember, when it's added to weekly, it doesn't really help. but. I, I might prefer to get Q3 week chemotherapy with Bev than weekly. I don't sure. Know. And we have a positive trial supporting right. that. We have GOG 218. Mm -hmm. That's a positive trial. It met its primary, primary endpoint. Point. Um, 
and, and supporting data from, from Europe and ICON 7. So we have a positive trial to, to support that. Um, unfortunately, it's not uh, listed as an indication in the US, so some providers can use it, some providers can justify its use in high-risk patients, stage four, and, and suboptimal patients per the ICON 7, mm -hmm. and actually 218 sub-analyses. Stage um, four patients in high volume residual disease and mm -hmm. subset live longer right. with frontline with front line BEV. So, and with ascites, which is 85% of mm -hmm. the patients. Yeah, so I think, I mean, we have mm -hmm. data to support that use. It's not, um, it's unfortunately not equally available to patients in right. the US because it doesn't have an FDA indication. Yep. Yep. Uh, were it available to me, I would absolutely discuss it with patients. Okay. Um, but it's not something that we're actually able to use at my site. So that's a good summary of Frontline. We really debated and discussed neoadjuvant chemotherapy. We really beat, you know, the <laughs> beat IP chemotherapy back and forth. Now we <laughs> talked about dose dense weekly and then adding bevacizumab. So let's transition.